Welcome back to the land of unpopular opinions. It is late, so I almost fumbled that, but welcome to a new vlog, one that I'm very excited about because you can see the title. This is going to be reading all 22 volumes of Attack on Titan plus No Regrets in the next 48 hours. I am hoping I can do it in 48 hours. I think I did it like that the first time, so... This is very exciting for me. Why 22 volumes, you may wonder, because I have decided that that is where it ends for me. That's a fun fact for the beginning. I have decided that for my canon, it ends with volume 22. And that's all I will say on that. So I will read 22 volumes. Don't ask me about the rest. But I am still very, very excited because I love, love these characters so much that it's insane and i hope that you enjoy obviously wouldn't be here unless you like attack on titan or are at least a little bit interested so this will be spoiler filled because i will do my best to point out everything that i notice is different from the show if you've watched the show i love the show but i will point out everything that's different from the show because when the f when i read it for the first time didn't really pay attention I was just trying to get through it so I could get to the new stuff but now I'm actually gonna read it and pay attention and see what's not in the show so this is gonna be almost like the reading it for the first time almost but definitely reading it physically for the first time like when I read it back in January I did it online and I'm pretty sure that's not the best way it's not even probably the official translation so here we have <laughs> one to four this is box set one we have the first four volumes we can start start it off and yeah again spoiler filled no idea how long this is going to be i'm going to try and ramble the minimum amount but i still still expect this to be long i mean like 24 volumes of a manga so just have a seat have fun enjoy and let's hope we don't cry I will just say just one thing before we get started, like, I am so used to reading manga at this point because for months, most of what I've been reading have been manga. Like, I haven't been reading any normal graphic novels, so I read, like, a, something recently, and I was genuinely confused that it didn't make sense reading it right to left. <laughs> so this is definitely back in my element for a little bit because I was... I became way too used to it when I started doing it. So, volume one we go. Let's not rant. This is going to be long enough as it is. I haven't read that much. <laughs> Although it looks like it was actually a lot. But, um, I am up to chapter three. And the first difference that I remember, but I'll still point it out in case you're here about that to see what, if you should read it or not. Like, I remember not liking the pacing of the manga that much. I think the show did it better because here it's like a flashback. The thing with Carla Yeager and the whole attack and them as cadets is a flashback because it's like she dies and then immediately it's like you have graduated, you are top of your class, you have to pick a regiment. And then later it circles back to like the flashbacks. I think the show did it better because it's sort of I don't know, it feels better watching it in chronological order. It just feels a little weird after having just been thrust into the story and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, you're at the top cadets. We don't even know you yet. We don't know what any of the core are, but like, goodbye, pick one. <laughs> but I don't know, he did it a little awkwardly, but I mean, it's still the same thing as the show, so nothing to report here. I just think the show did it better. <laughs> okay, this is a snarky moment that I... I feel like I'm stupid now. I don't remember if it was in the show or not, but when Aaron snarks Jean in the in the mess hall and Rhina just freaking like his drink or food or whatever comes out of his nose and he splashes the entirety of Krista and I'm like Well it wasn't that funny, Rhina, but we appreciate it. Finished volume one and I'm a little tired. I started this like after midnight, but finished volume one. There's like a little extras in the end. So I was reading that like an interview with Isayama and 
there's like a preview for the show. And it says director of Death Note. I didn't know that. I didn't know that it was the director of Death Note. No wonder I fell in love with it so much. Death Note is, as you all know, literally my favorite. So didn't know it, but it kind of explains a lot. <laughs> and yeah, not much different in volume one. It's just the pacing. Like the show did the pacing a little differently. So far, everything else is literally the same. I think, I mean, many mangas are, but we know what happened to Tokyo Ghoul. Attack on Titan is truly a, like um, an adaptation where you can watch the show when it all when like when all of it comes out you can just watch the show and if you don't want to never have to read the manga because it actually literally does everything the same like of course a line is omitted here or a little scene is omitted there we all know what we lost in season three but you can literally watch the show and you won't have missed anything so i'm not sure if that's good or not i mean great adaptation but also it really doesn't encourage people to pick the mangas up ever but i think it's kind of fun to experience the original drawings and everything as it was first created at least for me i would if someone had told me that i don't have to read the manga i don't know i always would have wanted to because it's just me i guess it's just me like it's not like tokyo ghoul when it's essential to read the manga it's you don't have to but it's very fun in my opinion <laughs> and it's fun to see how his drawings progress and stuff so i'm rambling now i'm not sure if i'm gonna read another volume or not because i'm hella tired but i will let you know if i do for now we're gonna pick it up let me just get volume two and here we go so almost done with volume two I won't talk too much because it's seriously late. Nothing much is different here. It's just the Battle of Trost, which, I mean, clearly everything is better in the show because you can actually see the action. But one slight difference, which probably was done because otherwise the moment would have been stupid. But when they're out of gas and John's leading, like, the charge, when the others are killed, here he immediately, like, grits his teeth and just leaves and they leave immediately because they seize the moment and he's later guilty later about like we used our own comrades as a distraction but in the show he like is shaking and gripping the sword and thinking about it a whole lot more in the moment at least it looks like that maybe it was also a second in the show but i feel like that was just a little bit drawn out here he immediately like takes over and is like we need to leave this is a distraction so that was a nice detail how he actually really is really good at taking command in the show because it's made slower it's almost like come on man just like pick it up a little you don't have time to reminisce right now or to feel guilty you can do that later that's one thing for example that at least feels better in the manga because it's like immediately next panel they're just going straight for headquarters so yeah now i'm almost done and i'm so tired <laughs> another night i'm done with <laughs> volume three i'm done with volume three we're gonna get to volume four i'm gonna try and read as much as i can tonight because i have just been not spending the day as i should have so it's probably not going to be 48 hours, but I'm going to do my best to do it quickly. Nothing much different in Volume 3. I mean, it's just the Battle of Trost and him going to plug up the wall. So nothing really new here, but this part of the story was always my least favorite because... I mean, I'm just... As long as the Scouts aren't here, it's not that interesting. Like, I mean, it's fun and all. But the scouts are pretty much what makes the story for me. So I can't wait until they finally show up. And here we have volume four. And I think we're finally now going to get to all the training, clearly. When they were still cadets. So let's wrap this arc up so we can finally get to the whole Annie arc. And when he's finally part of Levi's squad. So yeah, let's wrap it up. This was okay. Nothing new. Levi is finally here. I always, I mean, this part of the arc, I'm going to reference the show again because, I mean, why not? But 
this part of the arc has always been so satisfying because when Aaron's like, like for example, this part is so much more epic with the music, but like when he's going to plug up the wall and then like the music reaches a crescendo and then he screams at the same time as Armin when he plugs the wall, that is so satisfying. And then immediately afterward, like the Titans are knocked down and you see Levi and his cloak just flapping in the wind and when Aaron sees the wings of freedom I remember vividly remember the first time when I was watching the show I'll try not to talk that much about the show but I mean it's the same thing so I might as well I got such chills when finally properly for the first time after what like 13 episodes when his cloak is flapping like that and we finally see the wings of freedom and the scouts properly I remember just thinking okay where the hell are the scouts and then they show up and Without knowing it, I was so happy and so excited. I didn't even know why, because I didn't know who the scouts were yet. Like, yeah, the one small scene with them, but, like, they finally showed up, and I was just so excited to see the Wings of Freedom. Now I'm even more excited, because it means that we can finally get started with my favorite part. So, yeah, they're here. <laughs> But the ass whooping is now next, so that's definitely going to be entertaining. But I am actually surprised by how much in these four volumes, except for the pacing of the cadet days, literally nothing is different. The show did frame for frame the entire manga. I know in season three there's some differences, but I wonder how much is actually omitted. If there's any scenes that were not in the show at all, so... This is going to be interesting to see. But yeah, so far, you could watch the show and literally not have missed a single thing. Here is a slight difference, like a small difference. First, I just want to comment. It's hilarious how Jean and Aaron hate each other so much. But it also kind of makes sense when you think about the fact that they're both an Aries. They're really kind of... I'm an Aries. It, kind of makes sense actually that they hate each other from the get-go but that being said I don't know why I blanked anyway when Raina and Bertold are talking to Aaron and Armin about Aaron's training they don't go to the lake like the pretty pretty ass scenes where they go out and talk a little and just walk around until I get they get to the lake doesn't exist here they just talk in their beds, and Reina tells him, Good luck, Aaron Yeager, I know you can do it. Good luck tomorrow. And then it cuts to the next day when Aaron's in the harnesses. So, I'm not sure why they added that scene in the show. I mean, it's very pretty. But I don't see a reason for adding it. I mean, I guess they wanted to add depth to the two traitors, but... No idea why it was necessary. It was very pretty, but no idea why it was necessary. And yeah, it's very weird that after the whole battle of trust and the whole thing, now we're going back to the cadet days. I really prefer that. I vastly prefer that, how it was done in the show. It's very weird here. Like, I think all that extra context on their relationships and who everyone was is actually kind of relevant to me caring about them in the battlefield. Because if we're thrust into the battle immediately... I do not care who any of them are, aside from Aaron, Armin, and Mikasa, so I think they did a very good job at switching that whole thing out. And I'm almost done with Volume 4. I have a little bit left. I have no idea where it cuts off, but um, I think it like ends where Aaron's in the dungeon because that's how it happens in the show, so no kicking ass in this volume yet, but I mean, maybe. I have no idea how these are paced. This is just speculation but yeah I'm having a ball I have to say this is also like a small thing that I just noticed but in the show or at least maybe that's I mean I'm not sure if it's in all the versions sub or dub but in the show when they discover that his equipment is faulty Shadis I never actually could figure out how he knew the equip the uh, equipment was faulty because he doesn't say it. He just says, get down. The belt was broken. Here, there's just, it's just a small difference. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. But I don't think I am. Because I remember being very confused about how he knew 
equipment was wrong and it says it here because even when you fall down it shouldn't your head shouldn't hit the floor and his head definitely hit the floor that's how he knew that it was faulty they never say it in the show and i just now realized because i was like oh when i read it that i don't think it was in the show so yeah that's a small small difference here but i have no idea why they omitted it because it's Pointless. So they added the lake scene and omitted the explanation, but anyway. This whole bit, definitely not in the show, when Jean and Aaron are arguing and he literally says, I envy you to Aaron, like literally looks at Mikasa and says, I envy you. That was definitely not in the show and how they're like, we're going to take this outside later. This is a whole scene where... <laughs> When Mikas is like, Sasha let out a huge fort. That's that scene. They definitely removed the contacts with Aaron and John, and now they're outside. I'm not sure if they actually fight or not, because I told you I don't even remember what the differences in the manga are. Like, the show is too fused in my head. But now they're outside, and they're, like, talking about John, and he's serious about learning to move, so... I have no idea if they actually fight or not. And Annie and Aaron actually talk a whole lot more while she's teaching him the move. And now when they're looking at Jean, they're talking a whole lot more. So if there's something important that they mention, I will point it out. But not to hog the time. This is going to be long. After training, again, they're talking. None of this is in the show. I have no idea why they cut out so much. I mean, I anyway, they're talking about how Marco would be a great leader and like just discussing stuff. I love their dynamics. Yesterday, I read like the two short story collections that come in the other box sets i didn't want to really include this because that would be an age-long video but the short story collections are excellent and now they're just talking and jean is snarky but then sasha's like oh just come right out and confess your love already jean i love that so much i don't remember learning a move called suicidal blockhead like connie is so stupid but so adorable Oh, I get it. Like, the bit where Jean tells... I mean, where Marco tells Jean that he's a great leader, he tells him that during training, not while they were getting the supplies. And then the cutoff to him finding Marco half-eaten always hurts like a bitch. <laughs> but in any case, I feel like... I wish they kept more of the cadet stuff in, because... There are so few wholesome moments in this story that I think we really deserved more than this. So yeah, this is one thing, for example, that I think is better in the manga, but it should have been done before the whole trust thing. If one thing makes me cry is how good friends actually John and Aaron become even though they hate each other and they snap on each other all the time. It sort of reminds me of this scene in Ilse's notebook. No, not Ilse's notebook. Anyway, the Ova episode where they're saving Cresta and Aaron and John sleep next to each other. Like, now when he's making a decision next to the bones that he's going to join the Survey Corps, and he's imagining Aaron's words. He's like, I don't need you to tell me that, asshole. He's basically arguing with himself because Aaron's words came to mind while he was thinking. And then he's like, I'm not going to turn into an idiot like you. Not everybody is strong like you. Like, how he actually respects Aaron, and he hates that, but he still really respects Aaron, and the words really got to him. The one thing that I truly love about this story is the characters and how they, like, interact and how they all have different views on everything and how they come together. I, I just love them as people way too much, so... It's just going to be a lot of rambling about them. But yeah, I love how Jean actually really, really respects Aaron. We are done. We are done with volume four. It was a party, to say the least. It was a party. And that being said, I love that ending. How Levi's actually like, all right, I'm the only one suited for the job. I'm the only one who can handle him anyway. I'll take responsibility. Let's go. And how he's literally like, all right, I'm accepting you into the survey corps. You want to kill Titans? Absolutely enough for me. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> like, I adore how 
he was literally just, okay, I'm accepting you. Let's go. <laughs> then we get the ass whooping next time. Like, I find it hard to believe that the next box set or the next four volumes are actually going to be the end of season one. Because this is, I mean, it makes sense that the show feels longer because like every action needed to be animated and every time they're riding a horse it's not two panels it's actually animated horse riding so I get it but at the same time like how am I already how am I already halfway through the season like I just wrapped up half of the season so that really confused me a little bit mentally how I'm already now up to the Annie storyline like how the hell but yeah, again, it makes sense. So we're going to get box set two and get started. I have no idea if I'm going to read like five and six or just five, but I'm not really feeling tired right now. So we're just going to keep going and I hope you're having fun. I hope this isn't 3000 years long, but still we're having a party. And yeah, so far, as you can see, not many, not many differences, really. Like, so far, I would not tell anyone that they need to read it. Although the art is very fun to experience because, again, the show is so ingrained in my memory. It's so weird to see it drawn, like, literally drawn <laughs> before my eyes with lines. So, yeah. Okay, we are, this is, <laughs> we're up to volume five and... The first bit of the story is Ilse's notebook. And A, it's like a side story before everything else, just like Captain Levi was, which was included in the show as a regular clip. But they made Ilse's notebook an entire episode. Here it's literally just the bit where she discovers that the Titan can speak, she dies, and then Levi and Hanji just discovering it, and that's it. Like, that is it. I'm not sure if that is actually it and he's going to reveal, like, later all the other details. And how they actually went out to recapture Titans and the whole thing. Like, I can't... Unless he writes more later, they made up an entire episode. I mean, I love Ilse's notebook. It's definitely a very fun OVA because you get to see the vets hanging out and interacting a lot, which I freaking love. I mean, they're my favorites. So, like, Mike and Levi and Hanji and everyone else. I love Ilse's notebook. But if this is all there is of Ilse Longnar in the manga, then they made up the entire thing. Which is a little interesting to me. So yeah, there's a difference if you've ever watched the OVA, because I know for some reason a lot of people don't even know the OVAs exist. If you've watched the OVA, Ilse's notebook, like, only the bit where she's running and writing down things, and when Levi and Hanji, just like, nothing before it, when they discovered the notebook. That's all that's written in side story Ilse's notebook in the manga. For now, at least, up until volume 5. If anything else is added later, I will let you know. But yeah, that, almost all of that episode is made up. This is just a random thought, let me know if you know, but like, I know in Japanese, they all call each other by their last names because like calling it by name is personal, but considering this isn't Japan, like you see, Yama didn't want it to be Japan, this is like what Germany inspired or whatever the hell, and they're all calling each other by name, like Aaron, Mikasa, Armin, Mike, Levi, Erwin even, they're not calling him Smith. Why is Hanji the only one we call by their last name? Because even here... And you can tell that it isn't like reversed how it is in Japanese because they call him Mike Zacharias and Aaron Yeager. She says, I'm Zoe Hanji. So why are we calling her Hanji? I mean, you can, of course, call yourself whatever you want, but why are we calling Hanji Hanji <laughs> when it's obviously a last name? Like, it's a little weird. No one tells other people to call them by their last name. We're just going to adopt Levi's style and call Hanji Four Eyes because why are we calling her by the last name? Or them. Like, no gender. I get it. Them. Why are we calling them not Zoe? I mean, it would be kind of stupid to have such a cool character called Zoe, but yeah. Why? Can we just talk about how much I love when he gets his ass kicked? Like, for perspective... Aaron is like, 
my favorite character. I'm doing this because, like, he's very, very close with Levi. I love him for very different reasons, but Aaron's essentially my favorite character. I love this so much, though, because he needs to learn so much. And the fact that, I mean, yeah, I know why they kicked his ass. But it was useful for him, too. Like, you need to learn when to say some things. So it was definitely very useful to do it. But, yeah, loved it. And I love how when they're, like, talk proposing, like, he should be monitored by Levi. And they're like, would you be able to handle him? And he's like, if you mean kill him, it's no problem. <laughs> Like, no problem at all. But it's funny because, like, a lot of characters brag here. A lot of them. But every time the Levi says something about his abilities, like, I can kill him no problem. Or something like that. Or, like, my reputation speaks for itself. It doesn't even sound braggy. <laughs> it doesn't sound braggy or like he's boasting. It just sounds like he's stating a fact. Because that's pretty much how he lives. He knows he's the best. But he literally doesn't have arrogance he doesn't have the mental capacity for arrogance anymore absolutely not so he's just like i can kill him i don't see a problem here <laughs> and i mean i love that about him yeah i really do so this is a great scene <laughs> i love it so much and yeah i think i'm gonna wrap it up with volume five for today and then continue on tomorrow because it is getting a little bit late and I don't want to read when I'm tired. I don't really like this position when I'm that tired. The light is too strong. <laughs> this is what I mean. Though Aaron is my perfect character, Levi is me. <laughs> Levi is like my, I don't know, I relate to him the most so I love him with all my heart but like the real Captain Levi is, is unexpectedly short, high-strung, ill-mannered, and unapproachable. I mean a mood. A mood. That's literally me when you first meet me. And he adores animals. Like, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> oh, good lord. Like, also I love this part the most because it's hilarious, but still, yeah. Nothing, again, nothing different so far. Everything is pretty much the same. Kind of hell. Sorry. Everything is pretty much the same. Now wait a damn minute. I, all that trouble that I went through to finally figure out that Hanji's gender is supposed to be a secret. And the minute that Levi mentions her is, I doubt she'll, in bold, she, will keep her mouth shut. If she screws up while poking and prodding you, may, it may be the death of you, Aaron. She, again, in bold. Hi there, squad Levi. And then he says her, like, this is the official translation, because this is, this is the official translation. This isn't, like, the online version, so. <laughs> Gender secret my ass. <laughs> All this time I thought they, they were going through the trouble to never really confirm it, because in junior high, like, every time she is supposed to be referenced, there's, like, a blank or whatever over her name, but, like, <laughs> the first time that Levi mentions her, she, in bold. Anywho. Anywho, this was okay. Yeah. I was like, this is cool. They don't actually ever confirm it, but... Okay. Okay. If there is one thing that I freaking love about their dynamic, is that as soon as Hanji... It's like the minute that, like, she sa he says, wait, what experiments? She's like, oh, I thought you looked curious. And, like, <laughs> everyone's, like, getting up. But Levi is already at the, Levi is already at the door. <laughs> I love that scene in the show, too. It's such a, like, oh, I thought you looked curious. By that time, Levi is already at the door and the others are getting up, like, immediately. <laughs> I don't know why I always found that so funny, but, but it's just the instant reaction of, like, absolutely not. <laughs> We're out. We're supposed to be guarding Eren, but no, nothing is worth this level of pain. And they just leave him alone with Hanji. <laughs> like, the threat level that they thought he posed was instantly forgotten when they would be forced to listen to Hanji's lectures. <laughs> I love them. Okay, here's an interesting thing. Like, when she's talking to Aaron until, like, the morning, and he's just dead tired. I freaking love that so much. She tells him there's this case about Ilse Langnar. 
and it's in bold, like she referenced. I've never, ever heard Ilse actually referenced in the anime, unless, aside from the OVA. So no wonder everyone doesn't even know who she is. But here she literally says it to Aaron, so I found that a little interesting. I think in the anime they kind of omitted some stuff and then put it in the ovas and a lot of people don't even know the ovas exist you have no idea how many times i was just like on TikTok or instagram and someone saw a scene from no regrets and they were like oh my god i don't remember that in the show did i miss something so that was a little weird that they put it in the stuff that no one even knows exists and they did that they didn't even bother bother it's like bother dubbing because that means that no one actually knew it came out because a lot of people watch it in English me included but like and like don't get me wrong I like the sub I watched all of season four and sub because the dub wasn't out yet but I really really love the Attack on Titan dub just to clear that out before you throttle me but yeah I think it's interesting that they reference it here here's another difference again I think in the show they just gave up on the flashbacks and decided to make it all chronological because here after Erwin tells them all <laughs> how everything is and how terribly off the scouts are and they join and like it's immediately a cut and they're leaving for the mission if I remember correctly it isn't like that like after they're recruited they actually go back they meet up with Aaron and the reunion is there like I feel like there's a whole lot more before they actually set out on the mission because when they set out on the mission, that's immediately where they're riding the horses and Annie and everything. So, yeah, he's going to... I don't really like that because he's cutting off the action with flashbacks to, like, peaceful times when they were just talking and lounging around. And the whole thing where they're riding and the horse licks Levi, which I freaking love. But why... Why is he like that? He has just... I like that the show fixed his awkward cuts. It's a little little bit weirdly structured I gotta say now this is just gonna be random but I have to comment I'm reading like this like the extra stuff on the horses a it says they're approximately 160 centimeters tall then why the hell in the show when Levi is petting the horse and he is 160 he has to stand up on his toes just to reach the muzzle like the sort the horses are supposed to be that's weird to me because if the horses are Levi size, then how the hell do like Mika and Erwin <laughs> like you you get what I'm thinking? If they're Levi size, then then how do the tall as shit people actually like they just I mean sit down on the horses if they're hundreds? You get what I'm thinking. Anyway, that's just one thing. And in the show I think they made them a bit bigger. And another, the fact that they are really valuable. One is worth an average person's lifetime income. Ew. What Zeke did in season three now becomes even worse. Protect the horses. I am done with volume five. Loved it. One of the best ones so far. And we're gonna get to volume six, I think, tomorrow. I am a little tired now. But I love how in the manga at least armin has like brown hair like he's not a blonde like light brown hair but he's definitely not a blonde and aaron has i think like light gray eyes or something i can't really discern the color it's a little weird but yeah also a fun little difference that yeah i frankly didn't really know that they didn't look like in the show because aaron's green eyes are iconic anyway i will be back tomorrow we are thriving i am reading volume six <laughs> i mean it's different in every version, the manga translation, the show translation, the show dub, it's all different, but when they entered the forest and Aaron's just panicking and Levi's like, use the modest in intellect you do possess. Think hard, your life depends on it. The modest intellect. I mean, to be fair, in a dangerous situation, I would also be roasting the crap out of everyone, so that is definitely a mood. Done with volume six. This one is one of my favorites because this is a chunk of story that I really, really love when they're running away from Annie and like when he learns to trust Levi's squad 
and the flashback. I love it so much because even though Aaron and Levi are my favorite characters, their dynamic is the best because like he really looks up to Levi and he wants to please him while Levi actually really respects Aaron and likes him also a lot. Not, I mean, <laughs> I look at it in a this is my son kind of relationship, but like I, I love their dynamic. I love their dynamic like insanely much. So this is definitely my favorite chunk. And now it's gonna be the sad part where Levi Squad is literally obliterated. But yeah, this is a great volume. I love it. Nothing different, nothing different from the anime. This is pretty much the exact same, but the drawings are really cool. Like when it's those both pages kind of kind of drawings, I think it's great. So like really good and i mean <laughs> i know there was like rumors that isayama wanted to make levi ugly but he's been drawing him so pretty from the beginning like maybe not the first clip but he's been drawing him so pretty that that's just a straight up lie so definitely definitely a lie there but yeah this was great um let's go get volume seven it's actually early today so we might get more in you have no idea how much it pains me to read when they fail to capture Annie and Erwin orders Levi to go replenish his blaze and he's like all right Erwin, Erwin I'll trust your judgment because he told Aaron literally last volume you always have to decide if you trust yourself or others more and like in the show it's worded a bit differently but this makes it even more painful because he could have been like screw you Erwin I'm gonna go and see if my squad's all right I don't want to replenish there's no point he's like i'm gonna trust you and it was the wrong decision <laughs> like i mean technically it wasn't because later he got there in time with mika and they rescue Aaron and everything but it was the wrong decision for his squad i don't know what it would have looked like if he had gone to them when annie did they probably could have beaten her but in terms of his squad it was the wrong decision he's like i'm gonna trust you erwin and his squad is gonna die he's just gonna hear a scream know that Aaron transformed and that means that his squad is probably dead <laughs> so the fact that he made the decision to trust Erwin and his squad died is probably not a fun thought to him for him because for someone who has no regrets <laughs> he must freaking think that he keeps making choices that get other people dead all the time so it hurts a little bit it really does look look at this Look at, I hate this. I hate this every time that I do it because just as Aaron is lamenting the fact that he made the wrong choice, you see Levi's face and he's like, that voice, don't tell me. He knows, he knows that they're dead. He knows like, I can just kill myself immediately. I hate, if anyone wants to know why I couldn't give a single fuck about the Marleans. Like, future conflicts aside, this, this fight, I'm just gonna reference the end a little bit. I mean, it's been like two months since the ending. If you like Attack on Titan, you've probably already read it. So yeah, just a slight spoiler, but anyone who wants to come on here and talk about the fact that Eren deserved what he got when the warriors, the three, two, fine. The two little bitches that killed so many scouts and people in general, but so many scouts who we essentially follow for the majority of the story deserved to get their happy ending. I will tell you to go to hell. Like, just go to hell. Because, let me point it out, this is fiction, and if you want me to care about both sides of the conflict, you need to introduce both of them to me immediately so i can care my best example for this is tokyo ghoul because from the beginning we're following the ccg and the ghouls so you understand both sides i genuinely do i don't root for either but here when you only follow the scouts for like 22 volumes and you see what is going on with them and you're emotionally attached to them I do not care if they're the worst race on the world. If you make me follow someone for 90 chapters, 
then introduce a villain and say that I'm not supposed to pick sides, then you are simply wrong. Because here I am suffering. It's been seven volumes. I met these people and now Annie murdered them absolutely in cold blood. And I'm supposed to root for her because she also had a difficult childhood. Yeah, like hell, get fucked. That is just not going to happen. So yeah, Aaron all the way. I only now saw the mental image, like the people that did No Regrets are freaking geniuses. And I mean, they're obviously fans of this, but when he's flying over, I think, like Eld, no? Yeah, I think when he's flying over Eld, his broken body on the floor looks exactly, exactly like Ferlin. And no. <laughs> Like, absolutely not. I hate this. I hate this more than anything. And especially his face when he finds Owo and Petra. It breaks me every single freaking time. Look at this. Look, look at this. Suffer, suffer with me. Because I... It's always the reactions that get me. Never like the deaths themselves, but the reactions of the people. Like for example, in season four, I didn't cry when Sasha died. I cried when everyone found out and when Mikasa and Armin started crying and Connie was crying. It's the reactions that get me. And right now I feel like I need like therapy. I know everything that happens, but it's always the faces that just absolutely murder me. Let's keep reading and hurry this along. I need something better. Maybe this is just a translation. But A, he's a, he's a little bitch that he never actually gave us the Acker talk because they're the literal best and we needed them to actually acknowledge the fact that they're a distant family. But when he picks her up and he just like, this is in my, this is the best because he's simple. And he didn't, of course he didn't. He's way too hardened for that. Didn't break down after he just saw everyone he cared for die how he literally picks her up and he just tells her simply i'm with you that kind of killed me right now i'm in an emotional state i hope i don't actually cry to something that i really know i sincerely hope i won't but i'm with you but back off for now like that simple line just i'm with you like i'm here back off for now we're gonna get aaron i got your back <laughs> i'm getting emotional over this <laughs> yeah this is gonna be entertaining to watch i'm sure but it's not that fun to go through okay we need to talk about this whole thing because when he gets his i'm still not sure what exactly happens to him ankle broken ligament broken like his entire leg hurts anyway he got hurt saving mikasa from her own stupidity <laughs> but i love the conversation like this bitch literally is carrying heavy odm gear he hurt his leg and he's carrying aaron with one arm the midget is swole. <laughs> and as if you're like, he's okay, alive anyway. Dirty though. <laughs> like a comment under his breath, like dirty though and gross. But anyway, <laughs> don't lose sight of our objective. We got your precious friend back, didn't we? I do actually prefer the dub's version of this because he tells her, look, we all get that you love him, but do show some restraint. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I love this. When the two actormans are together, it's my favorite ever, and I still can't believe he never gave us the conversation where they acknowledge the fact that they're family. Like, Mix doesn't have any family anymore, and neither does Levi. He finds out that he's an actorman just as his last family dies, and we never acknowledge the fact that they're related, but I'm better, but that's we I can't do anything about that. We finished volume. Oh, seven a it was great emotionally just terrible but great especially the ending where where petra's dad talks to levi is what literally obliterates me every single time so let's not even talk about that anymore but what i did not however know 
is that the whole like extra episode where they go from the forest to the wall with like Ivan and when they go back to get the bodies and when they dump the bodies out and Levi sees Petra, that whole thing was made up for the show. I mean, they probably worked with Isayama, so it's not just like random stuff that they pulled, but I didn't know none of that was in the manga. Like, they get Aaron back and then he wakes up and they enter the wall. So the whole entire episode where they travel is made up for the anime. So that's a very big difference. Finally, we're pointing out something interesting so that's a very big difference i didn't know they made up that whole thing for the show but it adds so much extra pain he probably talked to isayama and he was like you know what let's cram something in it's gonna make you suffer even more so you can see how levi actually cuts off the stuff from his comrades so he can keep it and how he gave it up to the soldier who was mourning and how they all get angry when or when and the others are like heartless with air, air quotations but I didn't know that was made up for the show. It really surprised me. I was waiting for that. And then it was like, hey, we're entering the wall. So yeah, there's some info for you. Let's go to volume eight. And then we're done with box set two or with season one. Then we can, then we can go on to no regrets. I mean, I'm going to read it how it was recommended to watch the show. It, they always say to watch no regrets before season two. So that's what I'm going to do with the mangas. But... Sweet mother of God, I'm definitely going to cry today if I do that. No Regrets gets me crying every single time. And No Regrets, the manga, is even more sad than the OVA. So, reading volume 8. And, like, I just got to the bit where it's the flashback before Aaron turns himself. But I find it funny how, like, Levi spends a lot of time with Aaron. I mean, he's always guarding him talking to him explaining something to him just venting maybe like i love 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 their relationship so much i mean to be honest here he's not really guarding here and he doesn't have any of his gear on he's just drinking tea and also if we're gonna be realistic he's the last one of his squad left like everyone else died aaron is literally all of his squad that he has left he's the only one who knew the people that died like later when squad levi squad becomes all the recruits that's gonna be great but like aaron is the only one who was part of his squad during the toughest period with the female titan and the only one who actually knew the people that levi lost so i actually find it it's probably comforting to him on some very weird level <laughs> that he would never admit, it's probably comforting to him to be around Aaron because he's the only one who actually knew, knew the people and cared about them and learned to trust them and also made a wrong choice. They probably both think they're guilty for what happened. So I think it's very, very cute that they're just together now and then he's just literally venting. So yeah, had to comment because I love them both with literally all my heart. This is also one line that's like, it's different in every translation, but when he tells him, like, you're pretty talkative today, Captain. And he's like, don't be stupid. I've always been talkative. Are you sure? Are you really sure, Mr. Ackerman, that you've always been talkative? <laughs> I mean, he's sarcastic, yes. But I, just not to parrot myself, their interaction is literally everything to me. Wait a goddamn minute. <laughs> When they're underground arguing about Annie, he transforms immediately. Like, what? we're talking about differences to the anime here, so why are they making up so much? I mean, they're padding it to add something new and to add more conflict. And I mean, I love the anime, but like, why was it necessary? <laughs> here, literally, when Armin and Mikas is split up, He's like, she's like, the world is a cruel place. He's, yeah, it is. And he transforms out of the ground as a titan, punches Annie, and they go and fight. Like, there's the whole bit in the show where they're fighting, and he is struggling under cement, and they're trying to motivate him, and then he transforms eventually. Like, why? This is actually more badass. <laughs> because in the anime, it's like, sweet Jesus, Aaron, just turn already. Here, it was literally like, yeah, it is a cruel place, Mikasa. Like, 
that's it. He's transformed. So here you go. Two big differences in the last two volumes. They literally added so much. They didn't remove anything, but they added a lot. I can't see... I'm, can see why they added the last one for like emotional weight and stuff they probably discussed it with him why they changed this i have no idea <laughs> literally no idea so interesting i guess this is just a small detail we won't talk about it too much but when they're when niall asks or when like what the hell did you do there's just a small clip that i'm pretty sure wasn't in the show or it like zooms in on Levi and he just clenches his fist when he hears about a Titan appearing. He's probably pissed as hell to hear that Annie is here and that they didn't succeed and that he can't fight her right now. It's like a little display of emotion that I'm a little sad they didn't include because like Annie literally killed all of his comrades right now. He would love to kill her probably, but he can't. So it the only way that like Levi in the show shows his emotions is either when he's fighting he's able to really display his anger or he just clenches his fist like in the show he has his fist clenched the entire time he is talking to Petra's father but I feel like considering he doesn't show his emotions that much these are important little details why did you cut it out and added that stupid scene where Aaron is just struggling under like blocks of cement anywho <laughs> Now that I know it was changed, I'm a little bit upset. Another small detail that they deleted about the Ackermans, like, why would you do this to me? I'm a little angry right now. Because Mikasa, I feel like she never actually thinks about Levi. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't remember the show that well. But she's thinking and she's like, it was my mistake that caused us to lose the Korra's best soldier, Levi. I need to correct my mistake. I don't think she ever says that in the show. Like, we know she's acknowledged it, and she later asks him, like, how's your leg? But the fact that she's thinking about it here, and she's acknowledging it, she's like, he can't fight because of me, I need to take responsibility. I don't think she ever says that in the show. <laughs> right now I'm upset, like, wit, why did you... Why did you change so much in this arc? Like, why? You added stuff that wasn't that necessary, but you removed small bits of information like this like why would you do that this is also just such a small detail but it's so cute because here when annie cuts off like when mikasa cuts off annie's fingers and she falls Aaron is below waiting for her like he is in the show but he's holding up armin in his palm to get a better view and like it's so cute why are you cutting out these little things but then padding the runtime with stuff that wasn't even in the manga I mean, you already are the best adaptation ever, but, like, why? What? Like, Aaron holding up Armin in his palm. Look look at the shot. Look look at it. It is so cute. Look. It's so cute. How dare you? Now, wait a damn minute. The entire... Why is this entire thing different? Why? Okay, now, let me break it down. So when Annie falls down, they're all, like, all the scouts are actually on her. Not on the buildings, they're on her. Aaron isn't fighting her solo. He's not even fighting her. They're trying to get her out. And he reaches in and grabs her already balled up form. None of the stuff that happened in the show is what happens here. And then, Mika's like, oh no, rubble from the wall. And they immediately see the Titan. That was, like, the cliffhanger in season one. And Levi doesn't even show up here. Which makes a lot of sense. I always wonder in the show, how in the actual fuck did this guy put on his uniform and gear and with his injured leg fly across town just to tell Aaron to not eat Annie? Like, why did they even add that in? They just wanted a cool Levi moment. But it makes no sense. I always wonder why the hell he's there all of a sudden. Here, Armin just pulls him out and like, that's it. Aaron wasn't even aggressive or like out of control he was literally just working with the scouts calmly trying to get her out and she is already balled up when they get her out and they get Aaron out no need to like calm him down by an injured captain that just flew halfway across the town so wit what wit what the actual hell have you been on for the last chunk of season one because what the action what what on that note this whole thing is different Levi isn't even here 
it's really cool that he is there in the show but it it wouldn't make sense for him to be here and that's exactly what I've always hated like some random guy not Jean is just banging on Indian like why won't you come out and Hanji calms him down because all the scouts are actually on the ground here and Levi is nowhere near this place and it makes so much sense like my heart is so happy finally because I've been bitching about the fact that he put on his gear while he's injured and flew halfway across town just to pimp smack Aaron so yeah my world is finally at peace <laughs> no idea why they changed it okay now this is gonna be a very random thought I'm just leaning back I mean I understand that like the transition here is smoother because I didn't have to cut between seasons he was just writing and drawing as he felt like it but I didn't know that it was so immediate like when they come break through the door and they're like well Rose has been breached they are literally still in the assembly that they were in at the end of season one like they were commenting about the damage and then it's literally like well Rose has been breached I didn't know it was that smooth I know they had to cut it off somewhere so they kind of messed with the ending but I feel like honestly like I'm digesting this for the first time because I'm so used to the show and how the show is paced and organized that I forgot how this doesn't have any breaks like that he didn't have to have breaks between seasons because this is a written story so this is going to be an interesting experience and I'm definitely now going to feel the weight of how little time actually passed like a day after Annie was caught they had problems with Zeke like already and Mike is gonna die <laughs> like already Mike is gonna die which freaking sucks considering the fact that he was apparently only second to Levi so he did say he regretted it but that's not really an excuse to kill him off so yeah let's finish up volume 8 and then we're gonna do no regrets unless I am too emotionally damaged <laughs> then we're gonna leave it for tomorrow but I'm gonna do my best to do it now I am back just had a break to eat here we are we have no regrets <laughs> this is gonna be the last thing that I read today because I am emotionally wrecked and I'm gonna need a break but now these two as you maybe know if you watch the vlog where I got them are in German I don't know how to I I, I know German but not enough to read so I printed out no regrets in black and white in English so I can like read it parallel and <laughs> know what the hell they're saying I have no idea why I had to pause there but we're gonna go through these anyway because they're way too pretty like the color edition is so much prettier compared to the black and white one that it's like almost rude almost rude this was drawn by a woman and written by a fan of the show and you can tell this is my favorite bit of attack on titan stuff because it's beautiful when levi is written by a woman or like drawn by a woman you can tell i will show you definitely some pages that i think are absolutely beautiful because they deserve to be shown and for anyone who didn't watch the OVA, because I know, as I said before, a lot of people don't even know the OVAs exist. There are two OVAs based on No Regrets. <laughs> it's called No Regrets. And it wasn't dubbed. It's just in Japanese or in sub. And the OVAs are not that faithful on the manga. So I will definitely point out all the differences. Again, it's so funny how translations are different because here in the English one, it says, you little shrimp. When referring to Levi, but in German, it's, hey, Kleiner. It just means smaller. Like, small. That's freaking hilarious to me. But also, I don't remember ever in the OVA that they actually wear cloaks. But look, look at this. They're wearing, like, dark blue cloaks. And they are absolutely gorgeous. In case, also, you didn't know, because why would you? I didn't tell you. Aaron and Levi are my favorite characters. But... Because No Regrets is literally my favorite bit of Attack on Titan stuff, I love Isabel and Ferlin because in everywhere but the show, it's Ferlin, not Farlin. Isabel and Ferlin are so precious to me because in this short, like, story, I grew to love them 
so much that it's insane, but it's painful. Yeah, it's painful. <laughs> it's painful that I grew to like them so much. You definitely know why, but I've been rambling. I will probably ramble a lot with this because I love it a lot. <laughs> I love you guys so much who drew this because it's gorgeous. I will show you the color edition as I promised, but now I'm reading, so I'm a little distracted. I thought that they had the cloaks only in the beginning, like in the prologue, which they didn't really include in the OVA, but they completely changed. No regrets for the OVA, and I have no idea why. Like here, they're wearing the cloaks and way different clothes. Like they don't look like Victorian orphans. Levi is wearing actually a regular outfit. Like look, look at the trying to where is it he's wearing an actual regular outfit like dark blue pants like a normal shirt and a cloak isabel has like this these cool green pants like they're wearing normal clothes levi doesn't look like a victorian orphan here <laughs> so i have no idea i think no regrets they changed the most which i don't get if you're already adapting something that isayama didn't do then at least respect it like don't just he looks gorgeous here <laughs> I have no idea why they did that pointless shift. Because they look really pretty here. Why? 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 Literally, why? If you wanted to adapt it, then do it properly. Why? Well, I, I said I loved Isabel. They're literally like, woo, not bad. I, I mean, shit. She says as she looks back at Levi. Like, she thinks of Levi as her, like, big brother. They're pretty much a family, and that physically hurts me to say. But when she's like, wow, they're really not bad. I mean... I mean, shit. <laughs> and Levi's just like, yeah, just what I, I'd expect from the Survey Corps. <laughs> I love their dynamics so much. I will find, like, a panel that I think is great for comparison. Like, of course, I mean, I downloaded this from online. The official black and white version is probably prettier. But the color version is so much more detailed and, like, beautiful to look at that I will have to show you, like, a comparison. Okay, you want a comparison? Here's one panel. And here is his outfit. He looks literally freaking gorgeous. This is it in color. This is it in black and white. Like, Sam is just not the same without the color. Look at how pretty he is here. And you get, like, the full scope. Like, it's so much prettier. Here it is, like, like this. So, yeah, definitely get the color one if you can. <laughs> not in German like I had to, but... It's so much prettier. And why did they not keep this outfit? He is absolutely beautiful. The woman did her best. And in the show, they gave him the freaking outfit. <laughs> he literally looks like a Victorian orphan. Why did they get rid of the cloaks? Literally even changed his weapon. He has like this little hook thing that he hooks onto the knife while he fights. Like what is the matter with these people? We could have had a wonderful, beautiful Ova. That is accurate to what these fans wanted, but no, they knew better and they changed little details details that were literally unnecessary. You had the template, you just had to animate it, so I am upset. Here's another example. Look at this. Like, it's pretty, but A, you can't tell how they're dressing like this. I was like, this is hot. This is extremely hot when I read it the first time, but then... A, you get to see how they're dressed. B, look at this. <laughs> look at how pretty they are. Literally, look at this. This is so pretty. It's frankly a disgrace that this exists. <laughs> like, it's still beautiful, but, like, yeah. I mean, I don't need to say anything else. <laughs> now that I'm done fawning over them... <laughs> Because they are so pretty, I swear to God. The same minute that a woman got hold of Levi and had to draw him younger was the day that we won. But now, <laughs> that aside, <laughs> I love how he was... How everything that Levi repeats later to Aaron, he picked up from Erwin. Like, everything. He told him, you can turn in the Survey Corps or we can turn you into the MPs. Choose with whichever path you wish. This man literally adopted Erwin's whole worldview because he lost his own, which I understand. But also, like, because I don't think these, like, between chapter stuff, look at this. Why does he have the glove? 
Leroy with the glove is something I didn't know I needed. And also like the white shirt that's dirty and wet. They robbed us in the OVA. I feel absolutely robbed. So if you're going to watch the OVA, get your hands on the manga because it is beautiful. Can we talk about the fact that Erwin, who's here a general for the Survey Corps, called Levi literally on a level beyond even a Survey Corps veteran. Like, this bitch, I mean, we knew he was a prodigy, his life fucking sucked, and he's an Ackerman. But he, on his own, learned ODM gear to the level of being a veteran before he even joined the Survey Corps. Is it that surprising that he became their strongest asset? Like, congratulations, Erwin, you... You hell of a man. You literally secured the biggest asset for you guys. <laughs> like, congratulations. The fact that you petitioned for street thugs who taught themselves ODM gear without any of your training is absolutely great. Con like, <laughs> we're all grateful to you. But if he was on the level of a veteran before he joined, the bitch was just unstoppable when he actually got some experience. Why I love No Regrets, among many other reasons, is because we really, really get to see Levi at, like, the prime of his emotions. He never loses them. He just learns how to hide them. But he, I'm on the verge of crying just thinking about the ending of this. But here is the flashback that they, again, <laughs> cut out from the OVA, where... Isabel went to fight with some thugs or whatever they attacked her and they cut her hair and she's just crying in her room and without another word Levi just comes back holding like a knife covered with a bloody handkerchief and Ferlin just asks like did you kill them and he says nothing like he loves them so much after he lost Kenny I don't know when he met Ferlin. Like, there's the story of how they met. But I don't know how long he was actually alone in the underground. Because here, at least that's how it's set. He's like 25 or 26. So, when Kenny left him, that was like almost a decade that he was alone. And, like, then he met Ferlin, who became like a brother to him. Then they met Isabel, who was like their little sister. He freaking adores them both. They literally just cut up her hair and he murdered them. We don't know if he murdered them, maybe just really injured them, but... The OVA doesn't really do this justice. The first time that I read No Regrets, I was actually surprised by how much depth it had. Congratulations to these guys, because I can't believe that someone who isn't Isayama was allowed to make Levi's backstory, but it is beautiful and gut-wrenching at the same time. But I love it so much. And like the scene, like they <laughs> twisted everything. I'm a little angry at Wit actually right now. But the scene where they, where he like sits outside. <clears throat> it's after this. Literally after he like killed the people. He sits outside on the balcony and they both talk. The one where he smiles. They're not even in the survey core yet. Like they just messed up everything in the OVA. And now I'm even angrier. Because it's such a beautiful scene and a beautiful flashback and it adds so much depth to all of their relationships and their characters. And I will not repeat this again, but get the manga. And just the small detail that like when they're outside, he's like, is it as pretty as where you used to live, Levi? Maybe. It's been a long time since I've looked up like this. Which means that for however long he was with Kenny or maybe someone else he was with, he spent some time above ground maybe Kenny actually took him up to teach him some things and then return him downstairs to like get his own bearings but it's so pretty how they just like come out and sit like it's so much more meaningful it's not that meaningful when they're already scouts and I still can't believe that they deleted these beautiful outfits and that I never got to see them animated it is atrocious but it's beautiful to me <laughs> it's beautiful how it's so much more meaningful that they see the stars before they actually ever go look at this scene. It is literally beautiful. I would like to frame it. It is everything. And then he's like, just 
without any anything else they have such a relationship where they know each other Ferlin, i've decided i won't kill him for now i'm going to trust you yeah i'll trust you too isabel and how look at this precious 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 baby that is Ferlin. look at this when he, Levi tells him i'll trust you how he smiles i am literally weak this will be probably the longest part of the vlog, but I don't even care because this is my favorite bit of Attack on Titan. Absolute favorite. This is a line that I don't remember was ever in the show, but it's beautiful. They cut out a lot of good Erwin stuff from the manga, but squad leader flag, and you're right, these people had no training. They did not earn wings from us. They grew their own out of necessity, and I believe these wings will play a part in revolutionizing this organization. They grew their own out of necessity. Erwin, I love you so much. So, so much. I was actually wrong about their dynamics. I mean, they are all like siblings, literally, just family, which 10 out of 10. But like, Isabel is like their little sister, but Ferlin actually behaves sort of like Levi's older brother. He keeps just covering for him and being like, oh, shh, shh. anyway, Levi, don't worry, we'll keep it clean, right? What the hell did I tell you about behaving like? He's like the oldest brother and Isabel is their little sister and I love I love that so much. So much. He's just moody. He's like, didn't you hear how he talked about us? Like shit calling shit dirty. Oh, Levi. <laughs> Military hazing is always vicious. If you draw attention over something like this, they'll only treat you with courtesy if you act dull, just like them. Give it a rest. <laughs> you haven't forgotten why we're here, have you? I remember. In that case... <laughs> I love them. He's just whining. He's totally like the middle child with them. He's just whining and they have to calm him down. Stop bothering Levi for a long. We can just beat the stuffing out of them, all of them, like we do underground. Quiet. The idiots should be seen and not heard. The big brother in Ferlin absolutely peaked. <laughs> idiots should be seen, not heard. When I tell you that I love them, I need someone to remake the Ovas because it's a disgrace what they did with them compared to this. Their dynamics have been butchered, absolutely butchered, because they're literally iconic. <laughs> Who are you calling it an idiot? Fine, what's 18 plus 22? Uh, and she can't count it, but I love how Levi like does it immediately. He's always the type that's like really smart. Though he doesn't really care to show it because he doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> but he like says it immediately and he's like, Levi, not you too. You're such a pain in the ass, idiot. But he like rubs her hair. My heart goes to just kills me. You don't need to know how to add to go on living anyway. <laughs> Let Ferlin try to live on numbers instead of food and see where it gets him. But Ferlin... And he literally kicks her. Like, he just freaking just kicks her. <laughs> I love their dynamic. I love their dynamic so much. And he still, like, now makes them clean. And I love how when he makes them clean, he's like, you want us to do what? You wouldn't want me to cause trouble, now, would you? <laughs> and that's how he gets them to clean. They are siblings. Siblings confirmed. And I will lay down my life for them to have actually stayed alive. And by his side. I find it funny. At this point, I'm basically going to tell you the entire story of No Regrets. But considering that almost none of it is the same as the Ova, I might as well. But like how they're talking now and she's like, I've kind of been used to raising, living in the underground. But Levi saved me from that. And then Ferlin's like, I didn't stand a chance. Ever list one of my friends turned on me. Since then, I've always been with him. Like even in the underground, Levi maintained a sense of still kind of good morality like he, he did a lot of shit to stay alive down there but he still stayed good and he still stayed protective and he helped them and he hates injustice and i freaking love that so much but how isabel is like good with animals but she has trouble with people and that's exactly what levi is going to be like later i just find it somehow beautiful that this is pretty much the only time that we get where levi is yet not completely broken 
I mean, he definitely didn't have a fun time downstairs, but he sort of like got used to it and he made peace with his life and he found these two which be who became his family and then the titan thing literally rebroke him because he loved them so much but this is the last time that we see levi actually getting so emotional over things so that's very fun to watch and i'm very happy that it actually exists this is also a fun thought but like it said right here several months later so they're going on their first mission several months later. Why does that make it even worse? Because that means, I thought it was like several days, that means that Levi and Isabel and Ferlin spent several months as scouts training. Sure, they didn't go on a mission yet, but like, the scouts got to know them. Isabel definitely got to know some people. She's very friendly. But, like, Isabel and Ferlin were scouts for several months. I thought he lost them, like, immediately. They actually got cushiony. They lived above ground. They were probably like, oh my god, this is so luxurious. Like, we're finally free. We still have to kill Erwin, but we're finally free. And they actually got used to being scouts. And then they died. Like, I thought it was a couple weeks at best. Not several months later. They were actually full-fledged scouts. Longer than many of the people in the 104th. Oh my god, this hurts even more. Sometimes no context is a good thing. Oh my god. And they're going outside and how he like squints against the sun. I mean, he's definitely experienced the sun, but they're like, yeah, it's unbelievable that a human from the underground could go behind the walls like outside and how they come out and they're just all in awe i'm in physical pain when i see this because they're faces of joy and they didn't even get to experience it past that one time now i'm gonna cry like and how they're like whoa amazing and levi's like it's not bad look at this look at their faces of wonder and happiness even this little bitch look at him Why did- I understand they couldn't be in the main series because this was made afterwards so they couldn't live. But they deserved so much better. <laughs> they deserved so much better. After just this small chunk, I am loving them more than I ever, ever actually cared for some of the characters in the main series. Like- I would have sacrificed so many people just so that Isabel and Ferlin could stay loyally at Levi's side. I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> they just obliterated the Titan. I love how they work in sync because they're so used to working in sync. Because like he's literally like, okay, you immobilize him, I'll hold him. And they're like so good at working together. He gives the signal and they take out the knees and then he takes out the neck. They're literally a group, and he's gonna have to get used to working alone. I am in physical pain reading this. And then how everyone's just impressed, and he's like, so your wings are the real thing after all, Levi. Yeah, they are. They definitely are. Now I'm gonna read the two extra <laughs> short stories, and then maybe take a small break before I read part two, because I'm gonna need therapy after that one. Like, I'm definitely gonna read it, because I want to get that out of the way, but... This is just so good that I am almost going to be sad when I'm done with it and have to return to the main storyline. Like, this is so cool. This is like years back when Shadis was still commander. Erwin was just a squad leader. Hanji was so cool. Like, in next chapter when Hanji's just bonding with Isabella and Ferlin, it's gonna hurt like a bitch. Because I am 100,000% sure that even though Levi didn't want it, Hanji definitely comforted him. Because they all actually knew his friends. They knew them. They were scouts. So when they died, they definitely knew what they meant to Levi. Because they all saw them together and they knew how much it crushed him probably. So that only makes it worse. The fact that they all knew them. Hanji definitely, definitely helped him out. But yeah, let's read the short stories and then I'm going to do a mental break. Let's just also acknowledge the fact that, like, after everything, this woman, this 
beautiful woman just writes down oh i'm a rookie so i was really nervous about drawing levi which she drew the most beautiful levi that there ever was so if this is you as a rookie i need to see your work as a professional <laughs> because this was absolutely gorgeous it's literally my favorite short story when he meets Ferlin. He's just like, I wanted to get, uh, see how strong this guy was so I could get him to join my gang. But Levi bits them all up. And then when Ferlin's like, come on, let's go. The military police are coming. He's like, do you actually think I'd go with an idiot like you? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and Isabel is just laughing at him. He's literally like, oh, how stupid are you? Did you really think you could get him to join your gang that way? And in the end, Ferlin was betrayed and he joined levi's gag even though it was a gag of two but like <laughs> it's iconic he's like okay lay off me as a bell come on it was a long time ago my favorite line of all time come on this is big bro we're talking about you could have just lured him in with a broom i am imagining a scene where ferlin just <laughs> waves a broom at levi and he just joins his gang yeah i love i love these three idiots so much i am on the verge of tears but now i thought i'd just show you all the extra stuff that's colored i almost broke it let's not break it okay we've got this art which is absolutely gorgeous and then we have these two and they're both really pretty if we're gonna be realistic and this woman is supposed to be a rookie like oh, this isn't my best work ma'am like ma'am if this is not your best work then what is your best work are you kidding me so anyway this is it for no regrets one i talked more than i talked for the main story and i understand this but now we're going to take a break. Me, you're not going to get a break unless you press pause. And then we're going to suffer. This is going to be a weird angle because it's late at this point and I am literally tired. My back is killing me. But I love how when they're like searching for the documents and Levi and Erwin are talking, you can see that Levi is actually pretty surprised by how strong Erwin's resolve is. And he's like, huh. <laughs> But still, he thinks nothing of it. He has his siblings and that's all that he needs. R.I.P. But then Hanji comes and he's literally like ready to kill her on the spot. <laughs> he's a cutthroat little bitch. <laughs> like he looks like you saw what? And like he just pulls out the knife. Like that is your future best friend. Your future best friend, sir. <laughs> but yeah, I love Hanji's dynamics with the others. Like how she actually interacted with Ferlin and Isabel again it's a little painful to watch <laughs> even though I love it but I just realized for the last I don't know how many <laughs> hours I've been only immersed in no regrets and I am loving it so much I every time I do this I forget that the main series is like even an option because I am thriving this is like way before Aaron and the others, but I love it too much. I could pay so much money to just have a story about the veterans. They are by far my favorites. I keep saying that Aaron is my favorite character, but but it might be the vets. It really might be the vets. I love how Farlan Ferlin, I don't even know at this point, literally goes into dad mode when he's talking to Hanji. He just turns to Levi and he's like, be sociable. <laughs> like, we all need that one extrovert friend. <laughs> I practiced nothing special and Hanji's just drilling him with her happy smile. <sighs> I love them. He's like, you inspired everyone. You're pretty great. And he's just like, anywho. <laughs> I'm here to kill your squad leader. I just need to stop fangirling over them. But when Hanji's talking to them and they're literally like, so come on, Levi, would you be willing to let us know what goes on inside your head? She's just so curious. 
I can't. I'm self-taught. It's not something that can, you can easily teach to others. But sorry, I'm exhausted. I love how his reasoning won't be that he can't teach. It'll be that he doesn't want to be responsible for anyone other than the two of them. He taught them and helped them, so he considers that he's responsible for whatever they do with that knowledge, but he doesn't want to be responsible for anyone else. It's not that he can't teach, it's that he really does not want to. And again, that hurts. <laughs> A little bit. Baby Isabel is actually, like, trying so hard because... She's just doing the salute and she's just so into it and she looks back at her brothers and they're just like, dear lord. But she's so into it. I think they would have really, really become some of the best scouts if they lived because they're so cute and so dedicated. And god damn it. Here we go. This is the bit that I absolutely hate where he's just like, contemplating he's like if i go alone there's no guarantee i'll be able to find him again which is the right choice i have to choose and then he chooses wrong considering that i just read volumes seven and eight the whole choice and no regrets directly ties into this this really framed like his worldview when he followed erwin's agenda and like he regretted his choice but then he decided he would have no more regrets This is literally a pain to get through. So while I would ad advise that you read the manga because it's so much better than the OVA, also don't. You don't need to be a masochist like me. You really don't. I'm How they're fighting, he's like, Levi, are you out of your mind? Just wait for the fog to clear. You're going to be screwed. And he's like, I don't need to hear all this shit from you. I can do it alone. Just trust me. Is that an order, Levi? An order? What are you saying? I just... You guys are... I want to. Oh, he's just stammering because he never wants to hurt them. And when he said, is that an order? He's like, no, of course it's not an order. We're all equals here and I love you guys. I don't want you to get hurt. But how they just start laughing. And then Farron's like, all right then. I'll trust you. Just don't get yourself killed. Yeah. Yeah. You better come back to us, big bro. No matter what. Oh, he'll come back, and he'll actually watch you both die. Oh, I can already feel myself tearing up because this is so much worse than the Ola, how they died. But the emotion and panic in his eyes when he realizes that the footsteps are going back towards the others, just the sheer panic in his eyes, look at this. And how he's just like, shit, shit, I have to hurry. Here we are to the absolute worst bit because here he actually sees them in the distance and Farlan tries to protect one of the others and Isabella is like, I'm going to protect them all in Big Brother's place. And Levi is just going to come here as she's going to be killed. She misses the nape and before she can give it another go... <laughs> She literally slips because it's wet because of the rain. And then another Titan sees her on the Titan. And like, I'm just going to freaking cry at this point. But the fact that when as she was dying and she saw her last words were like in German, she starts saying Levi like Lee. But in English, she says big, big bro. And those are literally her last words. She either says Levi or Big Bro. Those are her last words. Like, save me, please, save me. And then the Titan literally just bites into her. And both Levi and Farlan see this. Not like where he finds them dead. They both see exactly how she died. And they're just freaking wrecked. As am I. And now they're both gonna go feral. Which is going to be the problem. So in his panic, he's just having issues with his ODM gear. I'm just going to quickly read this out. Don't worry, I'll be done. And then Flagon's also here to protect them. 
They're both working together. Flag and dies. And then just Levi's words, as he said, the choice I made back then was wrong as the Titan is picking up Ferlin and they make eye contact. And he's just like, done. He's just running towards them and he's like, please let me make it in time. But it's even worse than that because just as he reaches Ferlin and starts cutting, he does like reach his hand. He touches his hand, his bloody hand, and he pulls him out. But he'd already bitten through half and he's dead. So now I'm wrecked and I need therapy. Because unlike the Ova, where he just comes and sees them already dead, here he actually has to watch them die. And call out for him and see that he was too late. He literally grabbed Farlin's bloody hand as he was being bitten. And... <sighs> I didn't notice this in the black and white version. But when Farlin sees Levi, he literally just... Just waves to him. Look at this and smiles, he waves to Levi and he smiles. I can just kill myself right now, I swear to God. I have decided that I'm gonna stop the vlog here because I've been talking for way too long about no regrets and I've read volumes one to eight. So I'm gonna end the vlog when I finish no regrets and then we're gonna do another vlog for the rest of the volumes till 22, but I have no regrets about ranting this much about my favorite part. Wait a damn minute. I didn't notice half of this stuff in the black and white version, but Farlon is swallowed and Levi literally cuts through the Titan to get Farlon out. He cuts through the Titan just to get half of his body out. He carries it, lays it down on the ground, and then has his moment where he literally reaches over to Isabel and just closes her eyes this is so much more devastating than in the ova and now erwin's speech is also very different from the ova like when he goes feral and kills the titan it was very cool but like the action was the least impactful thing in the manga so you shouldn't have focused primarily on that not to mention the fact that the in the ova really downplayed how feral he went and they made it way too dramatic because here he took it calmly. You can already see that even though he is really emotional here. Unlike the Ova where he just freaking screams while he kills one Titan. Here, he's calm and collected and fr pretty freaking heartbroken. But it makes sense that he's calm and collected. Not as feral as they made him out to be in the Ova. But he's like still talking to the Titan. He's killed several of them. Like, many, many Titans. Not just one. He went down on one and everyone was like, oh, what a big deal. Like, no. Here he killed literally many Titans. And then had his iconic, like, for the humans tasty, answer me. Like, it so makes sense that he would be like this. They really, really screwed up the OVA. Because his characterization was off. They didn't follow the manga. And they downplayed his achievement. Everyone was like, oh my god. Levi chopped up the Titan good. Here he chopped up several, several, without going feral and literally shouting for several minutes. He's still pretty fucking heartbroken, but very much in character. Exactly how it goes down, his emotional stuff. He literally goes down to Isabel, sees how her eyes are open. Look at this. He covers her eyes up, then has a moment where he just grits his teeth in the rain. It looks like he's on the worst of crying. But then he just lets her go and schools himself back to seriousness. That's someone who was raised like he was raised. Not just going absolutely batshit crazy like in the OVA. Like he is really, really emotional. But he barely shows it even to himself because he wouldn't be able to go on otherwise. And I think this is great how he schools himself into seriousness when Erwin comes. I mean, he tackles him like in the Ova, yeah, but in the Ova, he's literally feral when Erwin comes. I'm going to talk about the fact that this iconic man tackled Erwin Smith. <laughs> and he is like, 
I'm gonna fucking kill you. That's the only reason I'm still here. Because, like, he left Isabel and Ferlin to their deaths to reach Erwin. Then Erwin and then Erwin just shows up. He's like, I'm gonna freaking kill you. But instead, Erwin's gonna recruit him. Like, the icon. Your friends must have died. I see. He's not even feral. He's just... You can tell. And I love that so much. They just look at each other. And it's just, like, the documents are fake. I'm going to read you out the speech because it's so much better than the OVA. So, so much better. Why did you make us join the Survey Corps if you knew? For one, your fighting skills are truly outstanding. The other reason is because they wanted to use you, the ones Lobov made a deal with in order to throw him off. And Levi's, of course, going to be pissed when he hears this. My friends, they threw away their lives for nothing. You just dragged us into your worthless schemes, but I'm going to drag you down too. And then before he kills him... Erwin literally grabs the sword in his hand, like in the show. Here they actually have an emotional exchange. He grits his teeth and grabs the sword and actually speaks from the heart. In the show, it looks like he's just, like, talking down. He's like, I expect you to follow me. Like, what kind of bullshit is that? Worthless schemes? Who was it? Who killed my subordinates? Killed your friends? Was it me or was it you? Even if you had gone together with them to ambush me, do you really think they would have survived unharmed? hadn't left them behind back then you're right my arrogance my own shitty fucking pride no you're wrong it was the titans the fact that he thought his arrogance and pride killed them oh my heart is breaking you can just hear it no you're wrong it was the titans like here he's actually using emotions to recruit him where did the titans come from why do they exist i don't have the answers none of us do Limited by our ignorance, we'll continue to be devoured. If we just stay shut behind the walls, we're never going to escape this nightmare. Take a good look around you. No matter how far you go, there aren't any walls here in this wide open space. I believe there is something there illuminating our despair. There are those who seek to prevent us from venturing beyond the walls. They are consumed by selfish thoughts of their own losses and gains from behind the walls where it's safe. It's only natural. During the past hundred years, hindered by the walls, the eyes of humanity have been clouded. They cannot see the landscape that lies on the other side. But what about you, Levi? Will you let your eyes remain clouded? Will you kill me and return to the darkness of the underground? We will not give up our journey outside the walls, so fight for the survey, core, Levi. Humanity needs your strength. Like, here, my heart is actually beating strongly. Here, he actually appeals to his emotions promises to give him a cause and he's like will you let your eyes remain clouded fight for us humanity needs your strength the fact that in the ova he just said like three words and was like i expect you to follow me that's just pathetic i'm gonna do my best to be very quiet because people are asleep but how you see like him, his eyes just opening and looking up as he remembers the three of them and the sun is just shining down on him. I love this moment so much. And the sun just peeks through the clouds as he opens his eyes for the first time and Erwin's just like, I'm not making a deal with you this time. This is, this is the shit. The OVA has absolutely nothing on this. Because this is literally incredible. And how he's now riding behind Erwin. Equal to Mike, he like falls behind a little. And looks back to see like the bodies and the smoke. And you can see the regret. And it literally just ends with him and Erwin. Running off. Into the sun. Like, look at this scene. I'm just holding up the black and white now, but. They're literally just riding off into the world with the sun peeking through the clouds and shining down on them. And the last shot of Levi that you see is him with the cloak and the wings of freedom because he truly became the wings of freedom for the Survey Corps and for humanity. And it's so beautiful and actually touching. There's no words said, no like stupid, stupid lines like in the Ola, like, oh, I see Erwin. 
you're intelligent, like you're the one who has his eyes open, I'll follow you, I'll have no regrets. Like, it's cheesy. They made the OVA and cut out everything that actually had emotional value and just threw in good action, which I get. But if we had gotten No Regrets properly animated, that would have been so much better. Now I just have the short stories left, which is going to be great. But I'm here to show you all the extra stuff, so look at the... It's freaking beautiful. I think the first story is the one where Levi is in a bar fight, and then we have the one with the dirt monster. That's some serotonin after this. Definitely needed, but this was actually beautiful and poetic, unlike the Ova. I'm so pissed off at the Ova now. He was so pissed off when he fell through the ceiling and Isabel called him a monster. <laughs> These children are my favorites, truly my favorites. They are icons. <laughs> and how he punished them by cleaning up. Like, look at them. Like, yeah, it's lines from my printer. He doesn't actually have lines, but how he just made them clean. And also this, where he's like covered in wine and gonna wipe himself off. And this, where he's making them fix something. That isn't in the colored version. And that is a sin because he looks so pretty. But they are literal, literal children. They're all just taking turns babysitting each other. <laughs> Babies. The fact that they had to send Keith Shawnee just to, like, teach them a lesson is freaking hilarious to me. Magnolia, Isabel is just freaking upset. Frolin is just not having it. And how he literally just bangs Levi. And he does not even flinch. Like, he has a bruise, but bitch does not even flinch. <laughs> but the fact that he wasn't sure, like, if he hit him hard enough, so he, he hit Flag and just checked. Flagon just fucking bent over and Isabel is laughing at him. Oh my god, I love them so much. I believe I did not even freaking flinch. He's hard as nails and we all love him. <laughs> this is the best though. And now it's the story where, <laughs> where Isabel just freaking starts singing. I love how they're so used to it. Isabel, I mean like Ferlin and Levi, they're so used to it. They're like, just cover your ears and give her food. She's been trained to do this. To wrap it up, here is what's in the ending. It's so much better in person, but like, you need to experience it because it's literally so pretty. The colors are absolutely stunning. And that wraps up this video. Final thoughts, this literally broke my heart. I managed not to cry, which I'm proud of, but it's beautiful. It remains my favorite piece of Attack on Titan anything because it's beautifully drawn and wonderfully written. You can tell that love was poured into it and a little bit of pain, but I literally loved it. I'm happy I finished this part of the vlog with no regrets because I wanted to end this on a good note. So to recap, we read volumes one through eight and we read No Regrets volumes one and two. And to recap our opinions in the main series, Aaron is my favorite character, but the veterans of the Survey Corps own my literal fucking heart. And I worship them and <laughs> the ground they walk on and anything they do or say i will be there and considering that no regrets was pretty much focused on the vet's age i literally loved it way too much and isabella and ferlin are probably my favorite characters now aside from levi like thinking about it if i could just throw out Aaron for a chance to have them be alive i'm actually thinking it over so yes, 10 out of 10, loved it. It was absolutely great. 
would recommend it, but for warning, it's a lot of pain. And definitely get the color edition. Now we're done with this. And I'm going to continue on the tomorrow, probably. I'm just going to separate it into two vlogs so it's not like three hours long. And vlog two is going to be the rest of the volumes. So 9 through 22. I hope you had fun. And I will see you in the next next installment.